The press versus Sarah Sanders. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Yesterday, the White House press briefing turned into a total feeding frenzy on spokeswoman Sarah Huckabee Sanders. The White House press corps is up in arms over the discrepancy between what she told the press previously that the president had no knowledge of the payments made to Stormy Daniels and what Rudy Giuliani revealed this week. Why well, can't you just answer yes or no whether you were in the dark? I think it's a fairly simple question whether you just I think didn't it's a have fairly simple answer that I, I've given time. you actually several times now. They gave you the best information that I had, and I'm going to continue to do my best to do that every single day. Familiar Trump enemies join the anti Sanders mob. Have we ever gotten any truth out of them? Have they become to the point where not only has she lost the room, but they've become null and void? But she's lying to the American public, and I think she needs to own that. Being ignorant or lying about it is just not an excuse. What, is no comment a better option? Well, uh, I think not having these, why not not have the briefings? If you're just going to lie, why bother? This is how democracies die, slowly, right in front of us. Every single day, deception and lies become normal. How dramatic, Mike, Mike Barnacle. This is how democracy dies. Oh, please. Then, under the headline, Why Sarah Sanders Should Quit, that's subtle, Chris Seleza writes on CNN.com, to the extent Sanders retained credibility among the White House press corps, she lost it with that answer. Admitting that you misled the press because the president misled you is tantamount to taking your credibility, pouring gasoline on it, and then setting it on fire. People just aren't good writers either. Well, these people are going to lecture us about credibility, the press? Consider the sources, as Brian Stetler might say. Or actually, didn't Howie, yeah, Howie Kurtz is the one who first said that. Are these reliable sources? For the most part, the White House press pool has become a pack of lupine, look it up, commentators, and their activists masquerading as journalists. Just listen to this. She can be mad at what I say right now. Tough. No. I'm a reporter who's going to continue to ask questions, and there was nothing wrong with that question. And I wish I could uh, install a BS meter inside the White House briefing room. Unfortunately, I think it would be going off all the time, uh, and it would be hard to hear the, the press secretary attempt to tell the truth on a daily basis. I actually really like Sarah. I think she's very resourceful. Like, she burns facts, and then she uses that ash to create a perfect smoky eye. I literally had to turn my volume down on that last uh, <clears throat> little bit. Oh, well, the effort to demean and drive out Sanders and send her out of packing from her job is part of the politics of personal destruction in this town, Washington, D.C. Anyone who works for the president is a target because the resistance wants to thin the ranks of those in the administration and advance a narrative of internal division and chaos. And at the same time, Sarah Sanders, she's in a very difficult position. And she has to look out for her own credibility as well. She was given scant information, and she repeated what she was told. And I think she did it in good faith. Frankly, all questions about this investigation should have been referred to the president's legal team, period. Trump needs a legal spokesperson, which he doesn't have at this point. Issues pertaining to an ongoing investigation should not be addressed by the White House press spokesperson. And despite the chiding by Jim Acosta, Sanders can't be brought on on these legal discussions without, of course, becoming a witness herself. There's no, there's no privilege, and she should get herself in any type of legal pickle. She doesn't want that. So it is right for the legal team to have kept Sarah Sanders in the dark on these sensitive topics for her own protection. And this is why I've always warned against arguing your case in the press. It's tempting. I know you want to respond to everything, but it is too fraught with complications. And it's very easy to make a misstep. But that said, do not presume that these journalists are disengaged bystanders trying to keep it real. They have proudly, many of them, become hostile adversaries and the vanguard of the resistance. It's gotten so bad that reporters are now engaging in full-out intimidation of the White House press folks, even threats of physical violence. Again, here's April Ryan from yesterday. 
Why didn't he talk to the White House press office about his impacting stellar statements about what was happening? Uh, the White House press office wouldn't coordinate with the president's outside legal team on legal strategy. You said yourself you were blindsided. I actually didn't use that term. Well, I said it, but you were blindsided from what you said. Well, for uh, with all due respect, you actually don't know much about me in terms of what I feel and what I don't. I want to understand how this operates. For Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the presidential spokesperson, the mouthpiece for the president of the United States, to say you don't know me in certain quarters in this nation. That starts a physical fight. I was very shocked. It was street. I will even go beyond that. It was gutter. You know what gutter is? This Twitter exchange between April Ryan, a White House correspondent, and the former Democratic mayor of Baltimore, Stephanie Rollins Blake. Blake writes, April Ryan unsolicited comeback suggestions for press secretary. I may not know you, but I damn sure know a lie, and you're wearing it, sis, all over your face. Oh, wait, is that smudge in your liner? Uh -huh. Ryan then responds on Twitter, LOL, stop. Be more in the house. I know you have my back. That you don't know me stuff begins fist fights. She needs to know what she is saying. I am not the one. Blake then tweets back, I already took my earrings off and Vaseline in my purse. And you see the fist emoji there, and that's nice. Then April Ryan tweets back again. That's what I'm talking about. Take off that pretty ring to the, whatever she says, street fight, LOL. This is gutter. And a gutter in need of, well, a little editing, apparently, but it's Twitter. But can you imagine if someone on this network started taking off their earrings, can I take mine off, and, and said, take off your pretty ring and let's have a street fight with our political opponents, it would be instant Armageddon. You know what they would do. They would say we were what? Inciting violence. So they said the other night about oh, ben, ben Shapiro, right? He was inciting violence because he tweeted something. But these journalists feel protected and free to threaten and slander members of the Trump administration with abandon. Their shared hatred of the president and those he represents unites them no matter what they do or say, and they think they can do it with impunity. Ms. Ryan has a history of these aggressive tactics. Remember, she was the journalist who hazed Sanders last Thanksgiving, suggesting that, that, didn't really, that she didn't really bake that pecan pie that she tweeted a picture out of. And she also regularly engaged in inflammatory encounters with the former press spokesman, Sean Spicer, and put my earrings back in. I appreciate your agenda here, but the reality is, oh no, no, hold on. No, at some point, report the facts. The facts are that every single person who has been briefed on this subject has come away with the same conclusion. Republican, Democrat, so I'm sorry that that disgusts you. You're shaking your head. It seems like you're hell-bent on trying to make sure that whatever image you want to tell about this White House stays. Well, truth be told, April Ryan's been tough on some uh, Democrat press spokesmen over the years as well. But here is the reality. Journalists are our representatives in the halls of power. And their job is to ask substantive questions and get real answers. They're not there to be perpetual critics or naysayers with a recurring role or partisan bullies. If you want to raise your profile by staging viral confrontations with public figures, do it on your own time. Get a podcast or, or be a regular pundit on MSNBC. But if you want to be a journalist and prattle on about credibility, why don't you start by trying to restore your own? And keep those rings in your purse and the Vaseline, put that away. That's the angle.